Connections to Christian Life Ministries with Pastor Tony Hicks. You can contact the ministry at 518-263-8828 or you can email TonyHicks1955 at gmail.com. That's T-O-N-I-H-I-C-K-S-1955 at gmail.com. Praise the Lord, this is Pastor T.X., and I tell you, God is awesome in all things, there's none like you. I tell you, for those out there, call a neighbor, call a friend, tell someone to tune in, but get your swords and your shields, and I tell you, let's hear what the word that God has given us this morning. Praise be to God, and let's pray to our faith walkers we go forth. And this last day is get your insurance policies together. Make sure. Make sure that they are not dead. Make sure that they're active. Today, I tell you that we all are living in the season of the end. Time is falling down. There's no time like the better time to get in line with the Lord. I tell you, God is awesome in all things. He's given us a chance to come in. For those out there, if you have the Bibles, turn with me to Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. This is inner ye at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. <coughs> Excuse me. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Praise God. Let's go to prayer. Father, we give you praise today as we get into your word. We ask the Lord God as the word penetrates our heart, mind, and soul, that you take over the airways. And, Lord God, we take the word and walk up right up in it, Lord God, apply it to our faith walk. May we walk that narrow road that we walk continuously, coming toward the kingdom. And, Lord God, may you be ever so proud. We desire to make you proud and not ashamed. We want to be a sweet aroma, Lord God, and not a stinker to thy nostrils. Lord God, give us eyes to see us to hear, heart to receive your word, and a mind to maintain it. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name we say, amen and amen and amen. Praise in the name of Jesus. Today I like to take for a path. For a text, I'm sorry. The path. Praise be to God. The path. The path is a narrow. The path is very narrow. The path is designed for God's chosen vessels. For many are called, but few find it. These are the ones who will inherit the God's kingdom. The narrow path is different from all of the paths. It has many diverse servants. Just like on the wide and broad and spacious road, there are many diverse servants on it. Some leaving into damnation. Some that are on that road will eventually, praise be to God, fall back and come off of that road and find their footage on the narrow road. Today I tell you the narrow path has fishermen on it who catch fish, who are men, who are sprawled out of the water who are fishers of men, those who are God's priests and his servants, who serve him, no other, there is no other path but that narrow path that would lead you into the kingdom. Today, these people must be selected, and they are, because those are God's chosen. They're chosen by him. And guess what? We must be anchored, steadfast, and have a position, and position themselves on the wall, crying out, Warning those that Jesus is soon, yes he is, soon to return. So repent, for your soul is in question. And you need to submit to our Lord and Savior who loves you. The wall and the battlefield is a part of your design. We are to follow that path, because on the wall we are to shout continuously that Jesus is soon to come. On the battlefield, we will fight many battles against God. Our Lord and Savior has never lost one. So we give them all to him. Praise be to God. We are to have our eyes on the prize and have a made of mind. And they are ready to see what the end is going to be. There are all kinds of saints on the road. They will encounter many obstacles, many from time to time. There are priests, preachers, saints, and servants on the road. They all have one task, one major task, to sell somebody to tell somebody about the goodness of our Lord and Savior, about the kingdom of God. We're to live before them upright and holy, walking upright, standing strong, anchored on the battlefield, to tell a dying world that Jesus is soon to come. Will you be ready? Are you ready today? 
we are preparing to meet our maker. The potter has given us all an optimal choice. He has not designed, no, not the same two people, the same thing. Isn't that awesome? Our God is so awesome that he didn't design nothing to be the same. There are no two raindrops that are the same. There's nothing, no two people, not even identical twins are the same. Today I tell you, everything our Lord God has made is his own design. No matter how man tries to copy it, man is not allowed to, and he's only allowed to go so far. God allows him to go. The narrow path has limited space among it. It ranges with limited resources, that is, views within this world. We can't say we walk with God and like the devil. We can't say we love the Lord and hate our brother. God's word is to be followed, not shunned or tossed aside. Although it might seem to be one justified, justified the mean. On the path, can't take baggage. No baggage can come. See, the past cannot go with you either. You cannot find the past on the narrow road. For all is forgiven. All is tossed out. Your past is lost in the past. And all forgiveness is by our Lord and Savior. For all who walk according to our Lord and Savior, who accepted the gift of salvation and repent and seek the Lord as their Lord and Savior. Now, understand, there's no straddling the fence. You're either cold or hot. There's no in-betweens. If you're lukewarm, the Lord will spew you out. For he said he'd rather you be hot and the path that is straight, it is not crooked. There is no confusion on it. It is difficult for some to follow it because they can't walk on the path that is causing confusion or that is causing anything that they like to do that is not pleasing to our Lord and Savior. See, on this road there is no fighting, no confusion. On this road thou shalt follow the Savior. Now your ways, your opinions are not needed, neither one to be heard neither desire. We live by God's word, not man's word. He's just a mere vessel, a vessel that houses a body that will eventually break down and die and perish. Now the soul, ah, but the soul will answer for what it has done to the contents of that body, to the contents of that house. You will answer for what you poured into and what you didn't do for it. But there is a strict code that one must follow. It's the Lord's way, no other way. But even though we think that our filthy righteousness is right, that's the right way, it's wrong. Our righteousness is not God. We are to wait upon the Lord, and he shall walk, renew our strength, and direct our path. That's the kind of God that we serve. Isn't that awesome? When our Lord and Savior was on the cross, dying, paying for our sins, paying the ransom that was required, many of his followers deserted him, left him, many sought him. When our Lord and Savior walked among us, he had 12 disciples. They walked with him faithfully. Praise be to God. Yes, they did. They walked among him faithfully. Praise be to God. And as they walked, there were 11 that were faithful, and one was a devil. A devil was among them. In Psalms 23, it talks about we want the Lord to be our shepherd that monitor his sheep and how he watches over them. He maketh them to lie down in green pastures that are full of good food, of peace, love, and joy, and how the waters are still, and how peace resides over that water. There's no choppy movements in the water. How it gives you sight of well-being. He heals our soul from the debris and the negativity. He gives us peace and love and joy. He gives us instructions on how to live a peaceful life, how to live holy, and when death is all around us, we will need not fear no evil. It might come upon us, but it will not prosper in sickness or disease. Our Lord and Savior comfort us, and he assures us he will provide for us and keep us safe from all harm. Jehovah Jireh is our provider, for he feeds us as well. He feeds the birds in the sky. He feeds the just and the unjust until he will separate the tares from the wheat. So he promised us that goodness and mercy shall be given to us if we follow him and commit ourselves to him. The wide road leading to eternal damnation is twisted and it turns even crooked. It's a way and it's an easy way for sin. Sin has set up its home there and 
sin leads to all roads that, <laughs> that has dropped hope, faith, and love, and brought up selfishness, desire, and all kinds of evil thoughts and ways. It does not refuse anyone. Anyone can travel this road if you so desire. These are they who refuse to answer the call. These are they that rejected God and claimed they had too much to do. They couldn't seek God for his ways were too high. Many just didn't care. Some even made their own gods and worshipped demons. Many refused to give up their ways of life and had taste of evil as vampires. And we know there are those vampires today that are men that have even sharpened their teeth and drink blood. Today I tell you that we are in a time frame where many people are mimicking all kinds of animals. Isn't that amazing? To me, they're saying the part of what he did wasn't good enough. Isn't that awesome? God is awesome in all things. Today, I tell you, as we go forth, many people bow their teeth down to look like vampires. And the temple of God, which is one flesh uh, process, they hang it up and mark with all kinds of ink and debris upon their skin. Today, I tell you, you tattoos were not supposed to be written or marked upon the flesh that God has given you. Praise be to God. Today I tell you, this road leads to hell, and hell is enlarged itself to receive thee at that coming. I'm not saying that if you have a tattoo that you're going to hell. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it's not pleasing unto our Lord and God and Savior for us to mark our body, because our bodies is a temple, it's holy. So now that you know, please don't mark your body anymore, because it's holy. It's a holy vessel. It belongs to God. See, a lot of things we think because we're in it, it belongs to us. No, we're temporary housing this vessel. Today, I tell you in Luke 11 and 23, it says, He that is not with me, that is against me. He that God was not with me, scattered. Many refuse to hear the word, even pour out of their mouth that God will understand. He will come, they will come when they get ready to come in. And they're not ready. They're not finished doing what they feel they want to do yet. And when they finish, they'll come in. Don't you know that we don't choose God? God chooses us. We don't choose God. Today, I tell you, even many times, people sit around and they don't read the word that's there. Because the word has a word to bring their body and spirit into the knowledge of his precious word. Today, I tell you that when they finish, they will come at if the time slot or have time to continue to sin. God just let them do what they do, and they come in, and they think that they can come into the kingdom any old kind of way. Mm. Can't go. God is a God of order. God is a God of who? He loves us and mercy, and he said he will have mercy on us. But there's a way that we all must come in, and God's word cannot return into the void. Well, I hate to tell you this, but your time slot is not so. But God called and he waits. And eventually, when you continue to keep rejecting him, he will let hell be your final destination. Luke 12 and 32 says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God promises children that he will provide for them. And all through his word, he tells us not to worry, for he will care for us. Yes, he does. Now, there is a gate that leads to the door, and the door is our Lord and Savior. There is no other entrance into the kingdom of heaven. The gate has many fruits that are about it. Joy, love, and peace, and happiness, and fruits of the Spirit. Now that wide and spacious road has many rooms, and it has many roads that has twists and turns, but they all lead to that wide and spacious road, but many seem to run headfirst to meet it. Many follow its designs and rather die than be separated for it. For it holds temporary treasures. Its shining treasures dazzle the eyes. Its goals mean that they're going to have room to commit more sins. They dream of possessing it. They kill to obtain it. Many will lose their lives to contain it. Many will kill their loved ones by stealing it. Money knows no name, no color, or position. It is not prejudice. In life, it beckons one to take hold of it and obtain its wealth. It calls to be conquered and make one desires more and more. There are many generations on this road. They seem to be asleep, 
but none has broken the curse of defeat or failure or detached from the Lord. This road provides a false hope. It gives the illustration that this road leads to heaven or detached one from our Lord and Savior. We should all be stepping into our destiny. See, we all have a destiny that God has given us. We all have a purpose in life. God didn't just put us here without nothing. He didn't just put us here and just say, okay, get down there and worship me. No. God is a God of love. He's given us a chance to do all those things. He's given us a mindset. Today, don't take my word for it. Read the word for yourself and see. See what thus says the Lord. God said, taste and see, for I am good. Yes, he is. Today, I tell you to take control of your life. Take control. Take control and take back what the devil has stolen from you. And take control and seek God and know that God is love and he will direct our path. Take your time as you're walking that narrow road. Breathe in and out. And know that God will continuously bless you. Know that asthma will not fall. Know that these kind of things that will not come upon you, God will keep you. Ted, don't just take my word for it. But on that wide and broad and spacious road, there are many people that are breathing their last breath. There are many people breathing with all kinds of aspects of diseases and shortness of breath. Today, I tell you to take hold, take control of your life. Today, I tell you to keep the pace. Keep that pace. Run it. Do you know that the race is not given to the swift, but those that endure to the end? Today, I tell you that God is awesome. Today, I tell you, he is our Lord and Savior. He always makes a way for his children. Today, I tell you, even that lost sheep, do you know God calls you? Yes, he does. See, we think we can call God, and we think we can just go back to God when we get ready. It doesn't work that way. God calls us. Yes, he does. He calls us. So pray that when he calls you, that you answer that call. For many are called, but few are chosen. Sometimes many just sit around and think that they have the time. Time is not on your side. Today I tell you there are many twists and turns on that broad and spacious road. They are not on that narrow road. You continue to press on. Press on toward that high call. See, on that wide and spacious road, there are many twists and turns because you're so eager to do this or so busy trying to gather the riches of that lifestyle or to be like the Joneses or to apply yourself to different things. Do you know that some people put all kinds of things before our Lord and Savior? They even look at education as something that they must have. Education is good to have, but it's wrong. But when it comes before God, it's wrong. Anything you put before God is your God. Today I tell you that we are out here and we're doing the will of the Lord. But I ask yourself, have you told someone about our Lord and Savior? Have you spent time with someone? Today I tell you there are many ditches and canyons and hills and valleys on that broad and spacious road. There's not on that narrow road. Guess what? On that narrow road, if you should have a trip, God said a just man falls seven times. What's so miraculous about that just man? He gets back up and dusts himself off to get back in line. Today, I tell you, on that wide and broad and spacious road, ah, but the ditches you fall in today, you might still be there tomorrow, down the line. Today, I tell you, those hills and those valleys that you climb, you might not be able to come down or go up. Today, I tell you that you need to focus on what God is saying to you. Listen, the path is narrow. Today, I tell you that even the sacrifices that we think we make, sacrifices. You know the one. Oh, well, Lord, I went to church today, pat myself on the back. I know I used to, when I was a Christian, born again Christian, I thought I went to church and I would pat myself on the back. Lord, I went to church. Look at me. God is not. Huh? That doesn't please God. I know he wants you to come to church. I know that he wants you to fellowship. I know he wants you to read the word, but come on. We need to worship God, not follow the traditions of man, but worship God. Today, I tell you that when you worship him, and true worship, oh, but he enjoys that. He loves to see his servants worshiping him. Today, I say by keeping the faith, reading the word, apply it to your faith walk, and know that God will intervene for your, on your behalf. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Don't just take my word. Stand on the word. Call it. I do. Lord, you said, and he did. He is my provider, and he does provide for me. 
she we had come in many trials. And God doesn't really put those trials on us. A lot of times we apply to the trials is because we're hard headed or we don't listen to what God has called us to do or we want to do it our own way instead of listening to God or preparing or seeking Him. We do it ourselves. You know what I mean? A lot of times uh, we get into relationships, we don't ask God about them, we just jump into them. We marry people and we don't ask God about it. We just jump into it. And then down the line, we're like, I didn't ask God, so there, what am I complaining about? A lot of times, you know, we get into these things. And without asking God, God allowed us these things to come upon us. Because God is God. There's no other God. We need to ask him with all. God wants to be in every part of our life. Do you know, even when I go to the store, I say, Lord, I need a parking spot. Do you know he'll find me a parking spot? Yes, he do. I ask him to be in the front. He put it in the front. And I tell you, even when I'm in the store, Lord, don't let me overspend. Lord, don't let me do this. And a lot of times, I know you say to yourself, well, we don't do all that. No, you don't. You know, that's what I do. But God wants to be a part of your every decision, your everything. Today, I tell you, there are many storms out there. There's so many storms that people go through. Even us, we go through storms. We go through storms. And I tell you, even the sky, when it's threatening, dark or red, we know that something is coming. Today, I tell you that the sky has a different season for this time frame. We know that something is coming. Today, on that storm, we see the choppy waterness of it. You ever been on, a, on the water fishing? Well, when I used to go out on the water, you know, sometimes it would be choppy. And ask the Lord to give us a good day and that the water would calm down and it wouldn't be choppy and that we'd be able to fish. And guess what? He did awesome. I tell you, he does. And I tell you, even on that water, there's still waters there. Water is so peaceful being out there talking to the Lord. But you fishermen don't know what I'm talking about. Pitch pole and turn it over and over and dragged under. A lot of times people get into different situations and they're constantly turning over and over and over in the same diseases, the same sins, the same torments, because they can't seem to break that chain. Pitch bowling is what I call it, because you can't seem to get out from under the current. Today, I tell you that you can break that curse. You can come from under that pitch bowling thing. You can come out and ask God if he will deliver you from it. Today, I tell you that turbulence and charming as, as a washing machine, you'll see that in pitch bowling. Because you're constantly going around in a cycle. There's a, a, what, a gentle cycle. There's a harsh cycle. There's many cycles to that pitch bowling. All kinds of storms and hurricanes and tornadoes and tsunamis and all these things that are causing problems. We see a great warmth in the earth. We see many people have lost their homes due to earthquakes and tsunamis and flooding and fires. We see all these things. But to let you know, we're all homeless trying to get home. True or not. But yet still, a lot of people are without housing, something to keep them out of the elements, to call their own. Today, we live in a society where the bankers really are getting more greedier. Today, I tell you, in many years, and not so many years, about 10 years from now, you won't be able to own a home. For those that do own their home, they won't own one. And I'm going to tell you why. Because everything will be sky high. Electric, everything will be awesome. There's a time coming where these things are also going. But understand this, this is not our home. This is a temporary set. Everything here is temporary. Today, I tell you that we need to focus on that. We see the Catholic society coming about. If you don't know, read up on it. Seek someone and tell them because God wants us to be knowledgeable of the things that are around us. Pay attention. Today, I tell you that even stalling and slowing your movement causes endowment that when we are on those storms, see a lot of us, we get stalled out. The first thing we do is we look to man. We don't look to God, we look to man. How can you help me? What can you do for me? If we turn it over to God, guess what? Most people don't get to the, the very end, to the bottom. When they can't figure out no man can't help them, then they turn to God. But I'm telling you, taste and see. Try God first and see what it work out. I tell you, God is awesome today. I tell you, storms can be diverted. Yes, yes, they can. A lot of times storms come upon us, but they can be diverted. We can move them aside. See, a lot of times when storms come, see, it's how we behave or act toward that storm. If that storm is heavy, what we do is we get all stalled out or we get so depressed or anxious or whatever. We need to be calm in the midst of 
the storm. Even when Jesus walked in the midst of the storm, guess what? He walked. There was no, he didn't feel the trouble or see any of that. Today, I want to tell you, even in the midst of the storm, I remember a lot of things were going on in my life, especially during this time uh, where I had a house, no to do, lights, gas, water, everything was being clicked off, turned off. But in the midst of that storm, what I did, I got deeper in the Word. I'm telling you, I got deeper in the Word. And when God told me not to worry, I did. And guess what? He brought me through all of those things. Everything was today and all. He gave me the money to pay all of them. Don't tell me what God won't do. Taste and see. Try for yourself. I tell you, storms can be diverted if you only trust and believe and put your faith in the Lord. Getting to know the Father is the one thing that you want to do. is to know him with all your heart. Today, I tell you, you'll see the power of God. You'll see the thundering and the lightning, and you'll say to yourself, my God is in control. He knows all things, and if something were to happen, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. And I tell you, we need to always make sure that we're focused in this last hour. Now, the scenery sometime when we're in a storm, yes, it can be frightening, even on the narrow path. Some things can be frightening, but God didn't give us the spirit of fear tells us to grab hold to him. So when fear approaches, get in the word and, and shun that fear. Kick it to the curb. It has no business being in your lifestyle, in your mindset, or wherever. Today, I tell you that it can be times where even in days and nights and evenings and in between, we find all kinds of problems. Today, I tell you to calm down in those problems, especially in this era today where many things are going on. Many people are not working. Their kids are not able to go to school. Give it over to the Lord. Not to me, but to the Lord. Give it over to him in prayer. See, won't he answer your prayer? See, won't he bring you through the midst of the storm? Like I said, don't take my word for it. Taste and see. Staying afloat is the thing that we need to do. I tell you, traveling the narrow road is the most beautiful thing you can do is travel that road. And when you travel that narrow road, you will know that God has a vision and a work out for you. He says, write the vision down. Make it plain upon the table that anyone reading it should know what it says. Today I tell you that the road to the spacious road leading to eternal damnation is not where you want to travel that broad road. You want to get on that narrow road, putting one foot in front of the other, Following, focusing upon our Lord and Savior, following his ways, keeping your mind set, sold up, to the king. Today, I tell you, you want to be vintage. Your attitude should show that you love the Lord <laughs> because he is God. And I tell you, your attitude should show and tell anybody that you belong to him. And that your work, you, the way you stand, you carry yourself, everything about you, your ability to endure and the hardness of a good soldier, know that God is able to do all things but fail. And I tell you, on that road, you will find peace love, joy, the fruits of the Spirit will be on that road. Have your mind made up and your time, let your mind let you be sold out. And on the end of your journey, may it be ever so sweet on the your journey that when you come to the end that it be said, well done, that good and faithful servant. This is Pastor T. So far, I will go out there. I tell you, God has a word for you, you and you. For those that are sick and shut in, desire to have prayer, please call me at 313 850-6177. But for those out there, I tell you, God is calling you today. For you hearing this word, you didn't get here by mistake. God didn't hear these, have these words from nobody but you. He wants to penetrate your heart, mind, and soul. If you're ready to give your life over to the Lord, I tell you, repeat after me. But in the meantime, I will extend my hand to the goodness of joining our church today, I tell you. Call me and call me at 313-850-6177. You're extending the hand of fellowship and friendship today for those that are out there. Are you ready to give your life over to the Lord today? I tell you that God is awesome. And I tell you, repeat after me if you're ready to submit to the Lord. Lord, I thank you for dying for me. You died upon the cross. You were dead and buried. The Father raised you up on the third day, and you sit on the right-hand side of the Father. Today,
today, Lord God, I thank you for choosing me. I take you as my Lord and Savior. I repent for my soul, and I thank you for letting me into the fold. Now, it's just that simple. Your name is written into the Lamb's Book of Life, and I tell you, God has a way of making things all right. Taste and see, he says, that I am good. For those out there that just said their prayer, get into a good Bible-believing church and get into a good Bible study. And I tell you, God is awesome. There is none like it. Don't take my word for it. Like I said, taste and see. Our church begins every Sunday at 3 p.m. You can call us. We're online at 518 263-8828. Again, that number is 518-263-8828. We're on every Sunday at 3 o'clock. We're on Facebook Live at 3.30 on Facebook for Tony Hicks and also for London Doors. Also, we have our Bible study starting up with Minister Karen Pastor on Mondays at 2 p.m. Evangelist Wilhelmina Davis at 2 p.m. on Tuesdays. Wednesdays with our Assistant Pastor Nicole Milner at 6 p.m. Also, uh, she's with our, our Wednesdays and Saturdays with our youth. And that number can begin at 518-263-8828. Also, Wednesdays, our meat eaters class is taught by me, Pastor Tony Hicks, and that's at 2 p.m. Look for us on YouTube with Pastor Tony Hicks. Also, starting our radio ministries at WCBG 1320 a.m., kicking off with Tuesday with Minister Karen Pastor at 6 p.m., Friday and Best with Pastor Tony Hicks at 6 p.m., tune in every every Tuesday and Friday at 6 p.m. on 1320 WCBG. G come hear the voice. Also on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m., please find and listen to me on L I C M C dot net net radio. And I tell you also on Saturday nights at 10:30 p.m. or 10:40 a.m. Come and join the family. That's on 14:40 a.m. I tell you. Also, we're on Channel 20 every fourth Saturday at 11.30 a.m. And I tell you, God has a word for just you, you, and you. And I tell you, God has opened many doors for us. And I tell you, for those out there, if you have any words or anything you'd like to say, please call me at 313-850-6177. But for our ministries, please call 518-263-8828. And may God bless you and may all be well. And until next time, may God continue to keep you. Again, this is Pastor D. Hicks. Until next time. Praise him in the name of Jesus. CKS1955 at gmail.com. Listen in Sundays at 3.30 p.m. and Wednesdays at 8 p.m. right here on LICMC Radio. In the name of Jesus, I tell you, we'll be turning the ministry over to Karen Pastor, Minister Karen Pastor. Are you on 